I would suggest that linking enemy combatants with civilians targeted for genocide is clearly a powerful legitimizing tool for any government intent on eradicating entire categories of people. This mechanism of mental rationalization is made all the more effective by organizing mass murder as a military operation. Genocide is therefore related to war first because it is much easier to carry out mass murder within the context of an armed confrontation. Indeed, it is difficult to think of any genocide in the 20th century that was not related to a military conflict of some sort, be it the genocide of the Herero in Southwest Africa in 1904, the Armenian genocide in World War I, the Cambodian genocide in 1975, the Rwandan genocide in 1994, or the mass murder in Bosnia in the first part of the 1990s, to name only the most obvious. Second, genocide is related to war because it is invariably militarized. It is psychologically and organizationally much easier for the perpetrators of genocide not only to act under the cover of war, but also to behave as if the very murders they are carrying out are military operations, even if their victims are women, children, and the elderly. By wearing uniforms, issuing military-style orders, maintaining military or militarized police organizational and command structures, the perpetrators transform what would otherwise be perceived as criminal acts into unpleasant but necessary military actions, performed with the same efficiency and discipline as any other military operation. This is, in fact, an inherent characteristic, one might even say a necessary condition of modern genocide as such, incidents of uncontrolled wild violence notwithstanding. In the case of the Holocaust, however, genocide included also militarized forms of incarceration, forced labor, and extermination policies. While these, once more, had all the external attributes of army or prisoner of war camps, such as barbed wire, watchtowers, inmate uniforms, barracks, and so forth, especially the extermination camps were unprecedented in the annals of genocide and have remained a unique feature of the final solution. One should also consider the inverse aspect of the relationship between genocide and war. To be sure, while most modern genocides have occurred in the context or under cover of war, not all wars in the 20th century were genocidal. But genocide tends to affect the nature of war as a whole, making for a wide array of other war crimes and crimes against humanity. If criminal war legitimizes genocide, genocide in wartime pollutes all combatants. The first months of the German invasion of the Soviet Union provide a telling example. Thus, by the end of 1941, up to 800,000 Jews, men, women, and children were murdered, up to 4,200 per day. At the same time, in the fall of 1941, 6,000 Red Army prisoners of war were dying in German camps every day. By the spring of 1942, more than 2 million had died. A conservative estimate of total Soviet military and civilian losses in the war comes up to 20 million people. The militarization of genocide and the barbarization of warfare are thus intimately linked. This has been demonstrated in many of the other cases mentioned earlier. Thus, German troops in southwest Africa and Turkish soldiers in Anatolia insisted that they were fighting an insurgency, a rebellion, or collaboration with a foreign enemy. The soldiers engaged in mass murder, the very fact that they are killing civilians can indicate their victims' complicity in guerrilla warfare or terrorism. Precisely because they do not wear uniforms, they are suspected of acting behind the army's back or perfidiously working for the enemy.